Hey there, welcome to the 48th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. In the last tutorial, we covered some simple Ajax requests. Uh, let's get deeper in this tutorial and do a little bit more. This time, let's read some JSON data as well as check for the, the ready state and the status of the page. So last time we left off with where you click on grab hello, it grabs the hello text file. Uh, even though it's a text file, I have some HTML here uh, using the type HR, H XHR request and displays it into our content div. So if you haven't already figured it out, the network tab is extremely useful when you're working with uh, uh, working with AJAX requests, and that's because the point of AJAX is that there's no web page refresh, uh, and the only way to tell if something is working is by going to the network tab. You can also use the console log, uh, the JavaScript console, to look for any errors. So if something is not working, such as the hello.txt file is not found, uh, the error will be displayed in the console. In the network tab, you'll also get either a 404 or a different status other than 200. So let's get going and edit our code. So the code is pretty much the same as last time. We're just going to add on to it uh, and add on functionality to the second button, which is the get JSON button. So let's do that. <clears throat> so we'll call it var uh, get JSON equals to. We'll do document dot get element by ID get JSON. Uh, we're just grabbing this. Uh, HTML element and storing it into the get JSON variable. And then we'll do var. Uh, we need a new keyword for uh, a new variable for the new XML HTTP request that we want to create. Last time we called it XHR. This time let's call it, uh, for some reason, let's call it J for short for JSON. You can call it anything you want. We'll do new XML HTTP request. Again, I love that about brackets, it auto completes. There we go, we have our new XML HTTP request object. Uh, let's build a little bit backwards again like we did last time. Remember I said you need three different things. You need the XML HTTP request object. You need to open the request, so we'll do get, and the file we're looking for is info.json, uh, located in the same folder here. And then we'll do true. Uh, double quotes, single quotes don't matter from one of my old one of my earliest tutorials. Uh, there we go. And then we'll do d.send, blah, blah. So if I now uh, refresh my web page, it will work. It will send this request, but nothing will happen because we're not capturing the data and we're not doing anything with it. So let's capture it and then do something with it. So we'll do get json.add event listener. We'll do click function. Remember to visit my, uh, watch my event listener tutorial series. Uh, on how to do all of this. Let's close it. This time, instead of doing it at the end, let's cut and paste this here so that we don't forget to do it later. Next, we're going to listen for the, uh, sorry, add event listener uh, for the ready state change uh, event and do something with that. So there we go. <clears throat> so we know the response text is going to contain JSON. It's just going to have all of this in a, in a long uh, uh, JSON format. So we'll just do var, I'll create a variable called data, called json.parse, and do j.response text. There we go. So do you know why I did this? Like I said, the information we're getting from info.json is JSON formatting. Uh, so if I just store j.response text into data, uh, it's just going to be a, a, a long JSON, which we can't really do anything with. Uh, we, we can, of course, output it as an object, but what point is that uh, if you can't parse it? So we are applying the json.parse uh, method to the response text, uh, something I covered a few tutorials ago. Be sure to check that out so that we can parse it and get the individual data. So next thing we're going to cover is, uh, next thing we're going to do is something I've also covered. We're going to do for, so the property in data, this is the for in loop, comes in very handy all the time whenever you're working with JSON. We'll do content.innerHTML. This time we'll append it, we'll append the property. And then data p, and then we'll do a line break. 
Uh, speaking of line break, uh, this reminds me that I should probably add this line break to my response text here, and that's because otherwise they'll all be put on the same line. Uh, I want to separate them. Let's actually create two line breaks, which I did not do in the example I showed you two tutorials ago. Uh, so there we go. So what's happening here is that uh, once the ready state change happens, uh, json.parse uh, is used to parse the response text, and we use the for and loop since da since data is now holding fully JSON data uh, to get the property and the uh, the property values and outputting it into the inner HTML, appending it one by one with two line breaks. Two line breaks is not a good idea. I'm changing my mind. So this looks ready, right? Yeah, it looks about ready. But let's run it. I'm gonna save it. Let's run it and see what happens. Uh, I intentionally left some stuff out. So we do grab hello. There we go. Hello from Easy Programming. Let's do grab user. Uh, nothing is happening. Why not? If I look at the console log, remember, like I said, you can catch errors in your console. And it says uncaught error D is not defined. So I messed something up on line 33 of script.js. So let's take a look on line 33 D. Yep. Yeah. Why did I use D instead of J? Typo. Okay. There we go. JSON. There you go. I hope some of you caught me on that. Clear this. Refresh. Let's get back to my network tab. Close. There you go. Hello.txt. Grab. Info.json. There we go. Pretty cool, right? But wait, hold on a second. Why did it grab me twice? Let's refresh again and try again. Grab user. Okay, something is not something is not right, right? Okay, here we go. It says uncaught error, unexpected end of JSON input. What's happening? JSON line 25. Script.js line 25. Let's take a look at that. So line 25 here is has to do with the response text. So something is happening with our response text. So if you haven't figured it out, I'm going to tell you why. It's because we did not check for the ready state value or the status. So JSON, uh, the data can be sent uh, whether the ready state is a 3 or 4. So And sometimes even earlier, uh, depending on what's happening. It could even send an error before. Uh, and since we're not checking to see uh, if the request is finished, our script will grab everything and then post everything. So before the var.data, we need to do something else. We need to have a conditional statement where we do if this dot ready state. So we're using this. So we're looking, listening for the J event add listener, uh, add event listener, ready state equals to four. So make sure it's complete. The request, the response is ready and complete, ready to be sent to us. And we're going to do this dot status equals to 200 because remember, 200 in the network tab means it's working. So info.json, it is 200, but uh, it was doing something before uh, it was over. So if that's OK, we'll open and close. And I'm going to copy, cut, and paste that into the our if statement here. So let me indent that, and then that. There we go. So what this is doing is it's making sure that the ready state is a 4. Uh, if you noticed a couple tutorials ago, a ready state has five different values from zero through five, uh, meaning it hasn't started, it's loading, loaded, uh, something is happening, and then fully loaded, which is four, it's the fifth value, because it's zero indexed. And then the status of 200, uh, making sure that it's not a 404, it's not a 403, it's not a 500, it's not anything other than an OK. So if both of them are, both of these conditions are met, since we're using and, uh, we will then grab the response text from our XML HTTP request stored into data, and then parse it using the for and loop and output it onto the screen. So now if I go back to our browser, if I click refresh, I'll clear my console, I'll clear my network, grab hello, hello is working, no errors in the network, grab user, it's still doing it twice. Why? Looking back at my code, everything looks okay. So I suspected it was some cache data. Uh, that was affecting this, so I actually did clear it, refresh it. Now if I grab hello and grab user, I only get one. So what it probably happened last time was that I probably grabbed user, grabbed hello, and then grabbed user again. And as you can see, it's uh, appending two of them, and that's because I told you uh, we're not clearing out uh, the inner HTML when we're uh, grabbing this, adding it into, con into the content. We are just... Uh, we are just appending it.
So again, grab pillow feels like it's clearing it, but for grab user again, now I get three. So that's pretty much what happened. Errors happen. Uh, this was uh, looks like a cached error from before uh, because as you can see the code didn't really change so it does happen uh, This was a perfect example of it. Uh, well, anyway, that's all the Ajax I have to show you for now until we go over jQuery at a later tutorial where I'll show you that how all of this can be made so much easier uh, in just a few lines of code if you have any questions about Ajax or about anything that I've covered uh, in any of my tutorials, please ask in the comments below. Uh, also, be sure to check out easyprogramming.net and leave a comment there. Uh, I hope you learned a lot about Ajax over the last few tutorials. Uh, there is a lot more that you can do with Ajax, not just click a button and update the content on a web page. You can do so much more. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to show you uh, as much as I know over uh, in the future. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.